Part B. In this part of the test, you'll hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare setting. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You'll have time to read each question before you listen. Complete your answers as you listen. Now look at question 25. You hear a patient talking to a dental receptionist. Now read the question. Hi, I'd like an urgent appointment, please. Let's see, who's your usual dentist? Mr Garcia. You say it's urgent. Are you in pain? Yeah, it's the tooth Mr Garcia filled last week. Well, he's away today, I'm afraid, but there's a free slot this afternoon with his colleague Mrs Brown. Uh, well, that'd be OK, but are you saying Mr Garcia could fit me in tomorrow? That's right, we'd get you in first thing. Can you wait? Well, I'm not chewing on that side and I'm taking paracetamol, which is helping. Mm -hmm. The pain started when I was eating a steak, so I'm frightened I might have upset Mr Garcia's work. It makes sense for him to check it out. OK, we'll book you in for tomorrow morning at 10. Question 26. You hear part of a presentation to nursing staff about an extension to visiting hours. Now read the question. Now, you'll have received the survey asking your opinion about extending visiting hours and doubtless you've got your own ideas about the possible impact on your work. You're probably aware of the evidence pointing to the positive effects on patient recovery rates of increased contact with loved ones. This isn't in question, but of course things must be managed properly. I've heard concerns about how busy everyone is, that you've got enough on your plates without having to worry about extra demands from visitors. Well... We've carefully planned things to prevent you being overrun with queries, interruptions and so on. Visitors will be given a list of do's and don'ts outlining what's expected of them. Meanwhile, managers will be monitoring things carefully to make sure routines aren't disrupted at all. Question 27. You hear a surgeon discussing a patient with a nurse in the recovery ward. Now read the question. It looks like Mrs Jones is still a bit groggy after her thyroidectomy. Uh, will she be going up to the ward soon? Yes, I'm going to call a porter. She should be going up in 15 minutes. OK. Uh, I've added some extra post-op pathology orders. Uh, she may have problems with the drop in her calcium. Her thyroid was just huge. Uh, we didn't see all four parathyroid glands, and we need to check that they haven't been affected by the procedure. She seems okay, but I want her calcium level checked twice a day. Uh, she needs to be monitored for any breathing problems, mm -hmm. muscle cramping and numbness, and for tingling in her fingers. Okay, I'll make sure a report to watch out for hypercalcemia is passed on. Okay, if you need me, call me. Question 28. You hear a chiropractor briefing a colleague about a patient called Ryan. Now read the question. Today we're going to start with Ryan. He's two weeks post-surgery for a torn rotator cuff. He also had a spur on his acromion process removed. Uh, this is his first time in rehab post-surgery, I believe. That's correct. Okay, so today we're going to begin utilizing high-frequency vibration 
to break up the scar tissue forming in his left shoulder joint following the surgery. We're going to do each of his treatments that way, so you'll see a progression over time, how we get him back to a point where he's able to live his normal life. Movement's the key to rehabilitation, and this treatment resonates with the nerves too, so it should eventually help them heal quicker and reduce his discomfort. Question 29. You hear a surgeon talking to a group of medical students about patient risk in emergency surgery. Now read the question. If you look at the risks of elective surgery, they're really very low compared to emergencies. Clearly, then, we can make the biggest difference in reducing risk and improving outcomes in emergency surgery. Our mortality outcomes here are actually below average. We're at 8% compared to around 13% nationally. The emergency patients I handle tend to be older, so they're at higher risk. And when they come in, we haven't got long to prepare them in order to reduce any risks, maybe an hour or two. In terms of patient safety, every minute, every half hour we can use to get them ready counts. That's because the patients we're thinking about are prone to developing post-operative complications, given that they have a range of associated heart, kidney, and lung problems. Question 30. You hear a surgeon talking to a patient who's just had a knee operation. Now read the question. How are you feeling, Mr. Shaw? Oh, exhausted. But the painkillers must be working. Uh, I can't feel my knee as you predicted. You're bound to feel weary after an operation. It went well, though. We cleaned out loose cartilage from the joint. You can go home now. Oh, thanks. Uh, I had an arthroscopy on the other knee several years ago, so I know what it's like. The idea that it gets done in less than a day is still pretty mind-boggling, though. Hmm. Uh, you'll need crutches for two weeks, mm -hmm. but you should be walking okay within a month. I'm good. Give it four months before you put any serious impact on it, though. Four months? Uh, after my last stop, I started running again within a month. Uh-uh. Thinking about it, though, <laughs> I guess I paid for it. That knee had a lot of niggles for months afterwards. Yeah, if your body's hurting, it's telling you something. Okay. That is the end of part B. Uh, how was the question? Was it uh, easy or really hard? You can unmute and uh, ask me, please. Renzi, what did you feel? Was that uh, really difficult it's, to deal uh, with? 50-50. 50, 50. <laughs> 50, 50 okay. Difficult. Mm -hmm. okay. Some questions are difficult, okay. All right. Um, okay. So we'll check the answers now and then um, we'll compare the answers. Okay. And we will go through the discussion as well. All right. Let's go here. So the first one is choice A. That's the answer for the first question. Because if you remember, he mentioned that, you know, um, uh, the first doctor that might have damaged, you know, their, uh, you know, his um, feeling, you know, that's what he said. He said something similar to that. It wasn't, uh, he was upset with that actually. Yeah. And uh, question number 26 is going to be because reassuring them that their workload won't increase. You know, the speaker said uh, you have already got enough in your plate. 
So we will ensure that, you know, the manager will also ensure that, you know, you are um, free to work, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So she mentioned something like you, you're not getting overloaded and things like that. Yeah. And question number 27 is B, possible post-operative side effects. She, uh, he listed a variety of, you know, side effects that may be possibly encountered by the patient. And then um, she said, okay, yeah, I'm making note on that. And then I will have a look at it and monitor those things, you know, isn't it? So that's going to be C. And 29 is A, prompt preparation is the most effective way to minimize patient risk. Okay. Immediately, you know, they need to do it. That's what they said. And question number 30, the answer is impressed by how little time he spent in the hospital because he said he spent only one day, isn't it? That's it. Not, not more than that. So he was really impressed about it. Um, so these are the answers. So how many of you have got full marks out of six? Renzi, did you get a six out of six? No, sir. Four only. So you got four 25th only. And 30, uh, 25th and 30 is wrong. Okay. Uh, what about Aishu? How many answers are correct, Aishu? It's a four. Thing. Four only. Okay, it's not that bad. Um, Amber, how many answers are correct? Sir, four. Okay, let's see how many answers are correct. Four, sir. Four only. Okay, it's not that bad. 